week, this week we're going to discuss live broadcasts of League of Ireland games and the adverse effects it has, which was a bit of a surprise to me. Jumbo Rob Palmer. Hello. Did, did you also think that live broadcasting was a good thing before this? Yeah, so, yeah, I did. I really did. Uh, like, um, I should just kick it off by saying this is this like piece I'm going to read that highlighted this for me. It was written by one of my mates in college. And, uh, like, before that, I was like, live broadcasting, money, money, yeah. money. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. Advertising will go up, everything will be fine. But, like, no. Apparently. No. I'll read it anyway. Yeah. Work away. But, this um, is, yeah. <clears throat> This is written by Key Moore anyway, and uh, he goes on to say, uh, Live televised football games are affecting attendances at the SSE Airtricity V Games as statistics show that of 15 games broadcast in 2014, more than half of attendances were below the club's average. This comes after Shamrock Rovers' request for RT not to televise their match against Dundalk. Rovers wrote to RT to state how they felt covering their game live would result in a loss of revenue, with no compensation being given regardless of attendance. This point was further highlighted when the issue was put to ex Bohemian board member Jerry Conway. Conway explained that whilst clubs were always always have their hardcore fans, this is not enough because the clubs will not draw a crowd from the general public. I think that you will always get the die-hard fans of, for example, Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers to go to the game, even if it is on TV. The problem is that the floating general public who don't really support a team but go but go to a game because it's attractive. These are the ones that are being lost to live TV. He went on to point out that the media coverage for clubs and the league doesn't justify itself as the numbers going to games remains the same. Not enough people are tuning in to watch games. Then that then. Then saying to themselves, that was very good. I might go to a game next week, said Conway. Because of this, club's taking a hit, putting them under financial stress. The only real effect is loss of revenue. 1,000 people not turning up to a game is a loss of ten to 12,000 euro. That, for example, would pay the wages for Bohemians or for a month, said Conway. Sorry, I fucked that up a bit. No, but um, yeah, the clubs aren't the only ones concerned about attendances, with the FAI's recent release of the Conroy Report detailing how they're going to make, how they're going to market the league in the future. The report is another effort from the FAI to rebrand the league, with some changes, new components to feature in the league's brand, including the use of international players for promotion. If the FAI seriously tackled the lack of marketing of the league, then maybe the products will look better on TV, attracting not just men to games, but girls, but girlfriends, wives, kids and families. The developments of the Connor Report are due to take place during the 2016 and 2017 seasons. However, whether it works or not remains to be seen. Okay, I hate reading out large bodies of text. Yeah, because the amount of times I fucked that up. Yeah, I that's do, fine. Right? That's fine. Um, <laughs> that'll stand to me when I plan to be a teacher. <laughs> Get yeah. everyone else to read. <laughs> exactly. Read it out. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. Like, I, I wouldn't have thought that broadcasting a game live would uh, would lose your revenue, but it would probably explains why you're not allowed to broadcast games in the UK. You know, like the classical, we always miss say fifteen minutes, half an hour at the start of the game. You can't broadcast till half five. Five. Yes, half five or something. It's like, like watershed. But yeah, there you go. So obviously it is affecting them. Yeah, it is mad. Like I always thought that like. Um, that live games wouldn't affect the tenants as much as they clearly have. I mean, yeah. like losing 12 grand per game to a League of Ireland club is a mega amount of money. Yeah, I mean, it's, it pays your wages for a month and usually spending on wages for clubs is about 85-90% of their expenses in general. So that's... It's crazy. That's money. huge. One twelfth of your basic season's yeah. earnings, man. So what's clear is RT have clearly shafted the League of Ireland clubs yeah. in terms of how much money they're going to be giving them. You can see why people would rather watch it on TV than go. I mean, most Friday nights it seems to be raining. Yeah, and like, <laughs> you know? and without wanting to be bad, like, do you, would you really want to go to Tala on a Friday night? Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, no disrespect to people from Tala, but like, yeah, the, the problem, the problem with the league is that it's, it seems to attract mostly young males, say between like sixteen and twenty five. Yeah, yeah. Like I went to a lot of Shelburne games in a run when I was in when I was in Colossus Do like like and, and it was really really good. I really enjoyed it. They were really welcoming and stuff like that. But we went. I went to Shamrock Rovers away, and it was nothing happened. There wasn't. There was just a real edge to it. You know, it's not. I mean, I've been to Premier League games, and by comparison, they're fine. Admittedly, they're Fulham games, but there's no like this marketing thing is very interesting. But if you want girlfriends and wives to go, there has to be guarantees that they're not going to be attacked by people wearing Stone Island gear. Like yeah. you know, they have to be absolutely certain that they're going to a, a match experience, which is which is the same as a cinema. I know that doesn't sound terrifically exciting, but that's what Premier League games are like. They're safe. They're clean. They're fun. That's you want, and you go to watch football, but a lot of people in England don't want that. No, the people who go to regular games, I know from experience, from talking to them and stuff, and saying, "Would you not prefer this? Would you not prefer that?" They don't want that to happen. They want it to stay raw. Yeah, you know, like you can't, you like, you can't have a both ways. You know what I mean? You can't make the league yeah. as like you can't make the league a decent league. Let's be honest, and not get rid of that basically ultra, ultra mentality yeah. that everybody has. Yeah. Like you know, you need you need to make you need to make as you said you need to make like a cinema experience. You need to go. Where people just go to watch the football and then go home afterwards. Like, is using international players really going to help the profile of the league? What you need to do, in my opinion, is tie the clubs into their local areas, mm. get into schools, and get the kids to go. The kids will bring parents, reduce the cost of kids' tickets. 
If an adult goes, he can bring two kids for free. Yeah. Doesn't cost you any, you're still getting your adult ticket paid for most of the stadiums aren't full anyway. You now those bumps on seats aren't, you're not losing money on them. Get the kids in, they're the key. They're the ones that'll keep going, they'll bring their kids. You know what I mean? You tie them into the local area. Make them love the club. But there you doesn't seem to be any effort on the part of clubs to do that. You know, granted, some of the clubs are closer together than others, like Shelburne and Bowes around the corner from each other, but they could still be going to their local schools. Gar clubs do it all the time. Mm. You know, so I'd be interested to see how it works. I was shocked by the revelation of the, the TV losing money. I always thought more live games was a good thing, but it makes sense. Why would you bother going to Tal Stadium if you could just watch it from your house? Yeah. The one thing you mm. could say is that, like, because the te- games haven't been on TV for that long, you could say that they haven't really got into the, yeah. the advertising revenue mm. yet. But like at the moment, if you're losing twelve grand a week, that doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter if you're losing that much money now. I also think the timing of League of Ireland games is muck. Friday night. Yeah, people are coming up. People are still yeah. working on Friday night. You know what I mean? You, you can see the appeal. I know they're not always done anymore, but you can see the appeal here at three o'clock after Saturday afternoon kick off. Bring the kids. Go with dad. Go with mam. Which the Premier League now is a family. It is a proper family experience. A lot of people say it's too sanitised, but I have to say it's a lovely experience. Yeah. Being able to just go. Like I did enjoy the the League of Ireland games but I was of that age that I just described to you you know what I mean at that time so it was completely different it's, it, it could be done and it could be done much much better I'm delighted that they're marketed in a different way but I think there's a lot more than just using international players to do it has to change you know, yeah that's a terrible idea well it's, not a terrible idea why but international it's players play in the league Duff that's it like and even so like there's a consider- couple of ex-Ireland internationals but I mean you, you know you're scraping the barrel with them like there's not gonna, you're not going to get that profile Yeah, for me it has to be done locally you got to get people who live near, uh, particularly in Tallaght. Like, I mean, there's like close to it's the most densely populated urban area in Ireland, I think, Tallaght. There's more than nearly a million people living there. That's and yet they don't sell out Tallaght Stadium, which is a 6,000 seat, I think. So like, that shows you automatically that you are not connecting with your, with your uh, target audience. Hmm. You know, they sh- they sh- there's plenty of kids in Tallaght as well. It's quite a young demographic. Should be able to sell that place out, no problem. 10 euro tickets, but see how that goes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's nice that they realise that marketing has to be done, but I mean, not this season, last season, the FAI's account, Twitter account, hadn't updated for the fixtures and the first uh, week round of fixtures was done. They hadn't updated from the final day of the season before. Yeah, that's really, that's really good idea, that. Do you, but how does that happen? How, like, that's your, that's your league. Yeah. But they hadn't updated. And they were probably tweeting about, like, um, or international abroad or something oh, like this as well. God knows. Just, yeah, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I, anyway, sorry, yeah, not to get too negative. I do think the potential is there, but I just think that you'd be a lot more realistic about it not yeah. just say we want girlfriends to come in two years time it's going to like, take a lot more time than that yeah. a lot more time than that anyway time. so that's our opinion on it what do you think about well I suppose first of all about revenue in the League of Ireland and then second of all I suppose we've, we've kind of pulled it into tailoring it for a cleaner atmosphere uh, going forward in terms of bringing in big attendances let us know what you think of it in the comment section below about the greatest league in the world uh, subscribe to Final Third on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the final underscore third thanks for watching